1.0 and the updates since have added a variety of new items to the game, from runestones that alter projectiles to other, more interesting things. Today's video is going to take a look at all these items. We're not looking at the Ku, Kia Skivi, Ukko Skivi, Broken Wand, etc. since I've covered those in previous videos in this playlist. Likewise, four of the items added in 1.0 I've also already covered in their respective videos, so while I'll still mention them in the beginning here, I'm going to go over them pretty quickly. Anyway, let's go. The first item I've already covered in this video is the Broken Spell a malfunctioning spell that you get by kicking these stones in the snowy depths. Next, we have the Crystal Key, which, like the Broken Spell, is part of a large quest I covered in this video and is obtained in the abandoned alchemy lab west of the mines. This is a later game area, so just make sure you're very well prepared when you enter. Now, for the gourd. These little things can be found in a small cave along the cliffside on the far left edge of the world and, when broken, produce a small healing field for a few seconds. I covered the secret method of obtaining a water stone in this video, but water stones also have a 5% chance to spawn inside of great treasure chests, along with perhaps some more dangerous things such as flasks of monstrous powder, which happen to spawn the wand connoisseur boss when broken. Yikes. Great treasure chests have only a 1 in 2,666 chance of spawning anywhere a heart can spawn, so the water stone is still incredibly rare, but not the rarest item. We'll see that one a little bit later. If you happen to ever find a great treasure chest, please share your seed in the comments, since these are so rare and are also the key to obtaining otherwise unobtainable things, such as creepy liquid. And now for the new stuff. The Kami is a cool little item that can be obtained inside of normal chests. Can be thrown to summon a cozy hut. If you find yourself overwhelmed with the world and its dangers and are in need of a place of respite, find a good spot and throw the cami at your feet and up pops a cozy cottage to lay your head. The more max HP you have, the more healing bolts spawn inside, allowing this item to be useful for even later game runs. It even comes with a nice little box of explosives. The sauna update added a 3% chance for a sauna to spawn in Hisi base. Hisi are very accident prone, so their saunas tend to burn down fairly quickly. Inside of a sauna will be a guaranteed Kiaskivi as well as one of two unique wands, either the Vasta or the Vita. The Vasta will have an always casts critical on wet along with any other spells on it and the Vita will have always casts Explosion on Drunk Enemies, along with any spells. Both will have pretty nice stats for this point in the game, and they both also look really cool. Why not cast spells of mass destruction with bundles of leaves? And now the Chaos Die. Roll it for various prizes. Uh, okay, let's give it a try. Just be a little wary of this one. Rolling a 5 will spawn 8 explosive fungoid enemies. Rolling a 4 will cause it to shoot pink lasers in a fan-like spread. A 3 will cause it to shoot multiple fireballs. 1. Multiple freezing vapor dripping icicle projectiles. 6. Tentacles in every direction. 2. Lightning bolts. And there are a couple very rare prizes that you can get as well. One good one and one very bad one. This is the very bad one. An extra large circle of acid, which, if you can survive it, can be a decent way to dig early on. Maybe. Though the Chaos Die won't start spawning in runs until after the Alchemist boss has been defeated in a previous run. And the good one? Some healing in the form of a circle of vigor, to heal all the scars from the previous rolls probably. <laughs> Now we have to talk about the rune stones. Six magical stones with different area of effects. First is the rune stone of fire, which turns any projectiles in its vicinity into fireballs. Any projectiles, so be careful. Here I demonstrate the rune stone of light causing the arrow traps in the temple to shoot beams of concentrated light instead of arrows. Next is the rune stone of edges, which causes all projectiles to become disc projectiles. Even the Hisi healer bolts. <laughs> 
If you find yourself backed into a corner, the runestone of weight can be very useful to protect yourself, as it causes all projectiles to be vastly more affected by gravity. Though, depending on your loadout, you might be able to get around that. Now, for one of the two most useful runestones, the runestone of magma, which, when activated, will turn all liquids in its vicinity to lava and associated rock. This can be very nice for cleaning up large amounts of dangerous liquids like polymorphine. Sure, lava is dangerous, but not nearly as dangerous as poly, plus you can pour water on it to turn it to stone. Finally, we have the runestone of emptiness, which I consider to be the most useful one, an item that, if I find, I will almost all the time pick up. It creates a projectile devouring field that functions as a shield from most attacks. As was just shown, you can still hit enemies if you get close enough to them. This also works against bosses, even so much as eating the alchemist's shield. But if you decide to use it against Kazi here, be wary of one thing. While it will protect you from all of the Chasm boss's projectiles, even the dreaded polymorph projectile, Kazi seems to actively seek it out and quickly destroy it, eating or deleting your shield. At last, we come to the rarest and arguably best item in the game, the Kakakikere. <laughs> the poop stone. This mysterious spiral-shaped artifact smells horrible and feels warm to the touch. Let me throw it on the ground to demonstrate its first ability. I mentioned earlier how great treasure chests have a 1 in 2,666 chance to spawn in a heart spawn location, and then there is a 5% chance for one to contain one or more water stones. Well, 1 in 30 water stones spawned inside of a great chest may be a Kakakakari, effectively making it so extremely rare that you might never even see one in-game. So, this item continuously spawns excrement. But that's not all. Let's head inside to see what else this wondrous item can do. Like the runestone of magma, this item will change any liquid into another substance, in this case, excrement, effectively neutralizing any of the most dangerous liquids in the game. As you can see, holding it will not only damage you and cause you to vomit uncontrollably, but it has this effect on enemies as well. So you can use it to damage them through walls, especially safe if you keep spraying yourself with ambrosia. And spoilers, nothing beats watching Colmy violently throw up as you wave a piece of hardened poo in his face. Oh man. The excrement material is strange in that it acts like a solid, however, the player can move as freely through it as air, though will still drown or smother in it. With the breathless perk and careful maneuvering, I was able to acquire the orb beneath the lava lake. Also, interestingly, the personal plasma beam perk will dissolve the material, so even without Breathless, if you have enough patience, you can cut to wherever you want to go. Although, of course, that's assuming you managed to find a poop stone in the first place. Anyway guys, those are all of the new items for now. I've got a lot more content on the way, showing everything post 1.0 that I haven't already shown, as well as some potential new series. More on that soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.